It is great to have you back for another edition of the newsroom from VLGA Connect here in the summer series. This is controversy. I'm sorry, folks, to bring controversy back to the newsroom. Catherine Arndt, the CEO of VLGA, is with us and has pulled rank. Hello, I Catherine. Have, Chris, thank you. And thank you for that introduction. Good to be back today. And I must say, I was horrified to see that um, in, the, in the governance update the other day, uh, Steve Cooper made um, an unauthorised decision to not uh, continue along with the summer series uh, virtual background. So I will be can having I, a, a quiet word with him about that. <laughs> can I come to his defence? Um, yes, the calendar might say it's summer, but we've got the heater on at home today when we're recording this. So you know, it, perhaps he's just not feeling it. Look, Catherine. you could be right. I've actually got the heater on as well, Chris. So. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I should be wearing a scarf when I did this today, but I thought that would completely um, undermine the whole summer series concept. Anyway, look, I'm positive and we'll continue along with summer until the end of February. Um, and that's the end of it. Argument over. Summer is here until the end of February and therefore VLGA Connect Summer Series will continue to be called as so. Let's uh, let's get serious, Catherine. There's quite a bit to talk about this week in the newsroom. Can I point you firstly to uh, the announcement from the State Local Government Minister, Sean Lean, of a new gender equity advisory group with... Uh, a, a lot of people are going to be representing the sector on this group. Look, that's right. And I believe that one of the purposes of this group will be to, to I guess, lead the implementation of the Gender Equality Act in the local government sector. So it will complement the work of the Gender Equality Commissioner, Nikki Vincent. And the VLGA is very pleased to have a, uh, have a seat on that advisory committee. It in, it does in some way replace the inaugural Ministerial Council on Women's Equality, which was established in, initially under Fiona Richardson, the late Fiona Richardson. So um, the VLGA is you know, really keen to see this group come together and, and get working. So there's some detail online with more to follow, but you can see the announcement on the, uh, the Premier's media release site. It will be co-chaired by... Labor Members of Parliament, Juliana Addison and Kat Theophanis. And Catherine, you mentioned VLGA will have a seat at the table, which is uh, is appropriate. So will uh, the MAV, LG Pro, uh, the Australian Services Union, the Australian Local Government Women's Association, and good to see Reconciliation Victoria. Yes, yeah, so really broad stakeholder group there being engaged, which of course um, is consistent with, with um, a number of the state government's policies and also necessary if we're to progress a significant piece of legislation in the local government sector. Some of the things that the task force will be looking at, I assume, is what councils are already doing or planning to do to, to meet these new uh, targets and requirements. I want to point you to one that caught my eye, which I thought was uh, really interesting, the City of Casey advertising a women and girls gender equality task force, which is about ensuring that council's policies and programs address the barriers to gender equality and ensuring equal representation. And they're looking for uh, people from the community to be involved in that task force, which is a terrific idea. Yeah, that's a fabulous initiative. And, and I would imagine that many councils are doing uh, similar types of things, but I think it's a, you know, a great shout out to, to Casey for for establishing that task force. Now, the Melbourne School of Government has released a very interesting piece of work that I know um, you've had a, a bit of a look at, but probably like me, are uh, waiting to find some time to really delve into it because there's a bit there, Catherine. Accountable lawmaking, delegated legislation and parliamentary oversight during the pandemic. What is it about this that's caught your eye? Look, um, this is a policy series that the Melbourne School of Government has been um, running over the course of COVID, hence the title, Governing During Crisis. Uh, and I was pleased to have uh, been the author of one of their uh, policy briefs uh, leading into the local government election as part of this series. Tom Daly, who, who leads this work, um, and we're actually going to be speaking with Tom tomorrow, but um, really what caught my eye was the fact that this policy brief examines many um, of, I guess, the unusual circumstances of key policy and expanded executive powers in a time of crisis where 
the, the, the transfer of power has, has occurred through the delegation of from the part from the from the parliament. So rather than the parliament coming together and because they haven't really been able to, um, responsibility has then gone to individual ministers, to bureaucrats. And this paper examines some of the opportunities, but also challenges and risks associated with that. So I'm really interested to be able to spend some time reading that, but also delve into that tomorrow with Tom when we have him on the program. So look out for that special episode of VLGA Connect Summer Series coming up on that theme of representative uh, democracy. Um, really interesting, I think, to hear Tom's views on how our thinking about this might have changed uh, as a result of uh, working through the pandemic. Oh, look, absolutely. And Tom's done a lot of work looking at democracies across the, across the globe. And I'm really keen to explore the local government comparisons here in Australia and overseas, and particularly the nature of local government where there are significant governance responsibilities legislated for um, the elected arm of local government. That's mm -hmm. a little bit different to other levels of government and how you achieve that balance of representational democracy, um, but also effective governance when of course, the politics does come into the democratic processes that accompany elections and being re-elected. Another interesting thing about coming out of the pandemic, Catherine, this one caught my eye, just as a comment. Um, City of Melbourne releasing some statistics that showed last week uh, foot traffic around major transport hubs, those being Flinders Street and Southern Cross Station, have hit their highest levels since April of last year. So that's a pleasing indicator of, uh, of signs of life uh, returning to the city, which I'm sure the city traders will be very happy to hear. Yes, I noted that article, Chris, and it is uh, statistically a, a large increase uh, from April 2020. And I think it's a good news story for the city of Melbourne and a positive in terms of increasing foot traffic, of course, brings with it uh, increasing trade and um, that that will be a good news story all round. Just to start, I think the, the story goes on to point out that uh, while it's significantly increased around those transport hubs, other sensors in the city aren't showing the same increase. So um, still obviously a lot to happen to return to normal. And if those figures were published before last week's late um, increasing of restrictions and the deferral of the 75% of uh, workers being allowed back in the city. So mm. we'll keep a watching brief on that one. A sad note in the newsroom this week, we don't often talk about news from outside of Victoria, but uh, the, the uh, mayor of Cobar Shire Council who has passed away at the age of 90 um, has received quite a bit of uh, media in the last few days and, and rightly so after a stellar career in local government. Absolutely. Uh, Lillian Braddy, I think she was the mayor of Cobar for 23 years and a councillor for 38 years and has a significant track work record in New South Wales of working with women and encouraging them uh, to stand in local government elections. So it is indeed a sad day, but what, what a legacy um, indeed. And, um, you know, our thoughts, of course, are with her family. Now, uh, Catherine, closer to home, there's a lot happening at the VLGA, so uh, we should spend a minute or two reminding folks of uh, all the good work that's happening and the events that you've got coming up, starting with Fast Track Leadership on 5th of March. Yes, that's right. Our annual uh, leadership development program for councillors, Fast Track, uh, is happening on the 5th of March, Friday. Uh, at this stage, we're hoping that that will be held face-to-face um, -face at the RACV Club in Melbourne. We have the Minister for Local Government opening, uh, opening the day, but also making himself available for a Q&A session with those participants. So uh, it's certainly one to attend if you would like to meet and talk with the Minister directly. And also we've got an absolutely stellar lineup of panellists um, and you can find out more information about that on our website. Your code of conduct training is being taken up across a lot of councils. You've got justicial lawyers helping you with that. That's right. Justicial lawyers uh, do a lot of work in the space of uh, uh, conflict resolution and also code of conduct matters. So they've got a lot of experience in the local government sector throughout Victoria and, and beyond. And we're really pleased to be uh, partnering with them to deliver our code of conduct training. And uh, as you said, Chris, many councils have taken that up. Um, we're also um, 
running counsellor induction programs. And I'm very pleased to say that we're doing that in partnership with Hunt and Hunt lawyers. Uh, and in particular, Tony Rannick, who's the partner there at Hunt and Hunt. Hunt, and Hunt. Uh, for our viewers would probably remember that Tony's been on a few of our panels in his capacity, not only as, um, uh, as a partner at Hunt and Hunt Lawyers, but also as a former mayor and councillor. So he can, you know, he knows exactly what's going on there and, and um, that, that experience and being able to understand um, from the councillor's perspective some of the questions that they might have is uh, certainly a, a benefit of having him in the room for that counsellor induction training. Absolutely. And there's um, quite a lot else uh, with your AGM, with the Heart Awards. I'm not yes. sure whether you want to plug it all today, uh, Catherine, but it's a really busy time of the year. It is incredibly busy. Our 2020 AGM is actually being held um, on the 25th of February. And uh, we do encourage all of our members to attend that. That will be held virtually. So. Um, you don't have to travel to attend, which makes it a little bit easier. And um, you can register for that online. We also have our Heart Award nominations opening up on the 19th of February. So keep a look out for those. There's certainly a celebrated annual awards program that we do in partnership with Reconciliation Victoria. Catherine, we might leave it there. Thank you. I covered a lot of ground as usual for Newsroom. And uh, we weren't inundated with uh, responses uh, from uh, from I forget we we called for people to to give us their thoughts on something look, last time. Look, we did, and clearly we're not talking about controversial enough uh, matters. No. Um, one thing I did want to say was I did notice on Twitter that this morning that Victoria's chief health officer is uh, Brett Sutton is feeling a little under the weather today and has tweeted that he's going off to uh, have a COVID test. So we do um, hope that uh, all is well with you, Brett, and that those those results come back negative or, or if not that you uh, you remain well um, and of course self-isolate. Um, the other thing I did note and this is from overseas news and I think Chris you may have sent me this story about uh, an abandoned hotel in the US mm. that has been converted into affordable housing or at least housing home a homeless. The homeless. Yes mm. so I think um, I'll find that link and perhaps we could share it um, uh, more broadly with, with our viewers over our social media link, because I thought that that was certainly an initiative worth um, looking at. Great story. I think it's called the Swamp Hotel, actually. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll yes. dig that out. Uh, there's always too much to talk about, so we don't get to everything that we uh, highlight. But as you say, we'll include the links in the, uh, in the comments and people can uh, read them at their leisure. Catherine, always great to catch up. Let's keep summer going for another couple of weeks. Yes, we'll indeed. We'll see you next week. See you then, Chris. Catherine Art, CEO of the VLGA, who joins me each week at this time for the newsroom on VLGA Connect Summer Series. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.